It's time for Starship soaring. After months of investigation and an environmental review, the FAA has finally given SpaceX the go-ahead for its second launch of Starship. Now it's up to SpaceX to get the vehicle ready to fly. How will Ship 25 and Booster 9 change the rocket industry? What can we expect from this milestone? All this and more in today's episode of Tech Map. Just as Elon Musk said, the FAA has given SpaceX the OK to fly its second Starship rocket from Starbase, Texas ahead of Friday's launch attempt, clearing the way for liftoff nearly seven months after the rocket suffered multiple failures and blew itself up during its maiden flight in April. Since then, SpaceX has implemented what company founder Elon Musk said were well over 1,000 upgrades and improvements and carried out 63 FAA-mandated corrections designed to improve flight safety and performance. The launch license applies to all phases of the proposed operation, the FAA said in a statement. After consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and a written evaluation of the 2022 Programmatic Environmental Assessment, the FAA concluded there are no significant environmental changes. The Super Heavy's liftoff from SpaceX's Boca Chica Flight Test Facility on the Texas Gulf Coast is targeted for 8 a.m. EST Friday, the opening of a two-hour window. It has been a long process for SpaceX to get to this point, the first flight of Starship took place on April 20th and flew through the point of stage separation before the vehicle lost control. SpaceX has spent the past several months rebuilding the launch site and making upgrades to the rocket system at the company's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. The launch pad was torn to pieces by the sheer force of Super Heavy's engines igniting, sending debris into the surrounding coastal area. The rocket mishap's potential impacts galvanized a group of environmental and wildlife advocates to fill a, a May lawsuit against the FAA, claiming the agency had failed to comply with federal environmental laws when it greenlit Starship's first test flight. The FAA finished its safety investigation in September, laying out 63 corrective actions for SpaceX. The agency then completed a safety review on October 31st for SpaceX's planned second test flight. However, as part of its environmental review, the FAA set up a consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service under the Endangered Species Act. That process concluded on November 14th, according to a statement from the agency, allowing FAA to issue the launch permit. Now SpaceX is set for another attempt to propel Starship off the launch pad and send it on a mission to complete nearly one full lap of Earth. This will be another SpaceX challenge. If the test mission once again fails, NASA's aim to return humans to the moon's surface could face delays as the space agency is racing other nations, including China, to build a permanent lunar settlement. The space agency has already warned that Starship might not be ready in time for a 2025 moon landing attempt. Even if successful, SpaceX still has numerous technological hurdles to clear. The company must demonstrate the rocket can safely deliver a satellite or another payload to Earth's orbit, as well as dock with a refueling tanker to top off its propellant while in orbit, a move that will be essential for getting the massive vehicle to the moon. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk posted in August on social media that he foresees about a 50% probability of reaching orbital velocity, though he cautiously added that even getting to stage separation would be a win, referring to the launch phase when the super heavy rocket detaches from the Starship spacecraft. SpaceX may also face additional pushback from environmentalists ahead of, or in the wake of, the second launch attempt. The group of environmental and wildlife advocates that previously sued the FAA could still attempt to seek an injunction to stop the next launch. When reached for comment, Jared Margolis, a senior attorney at the Center for Biological Diversity, said the nonprofit group had not decided whether to pursue that route, though it recognized the option was still on the table. It's not clear, however, whether the group will have enough time to file the proper paperwork before SpaceX moves forward with the anticipated launch. Anyway, the upcoming Booster 9 and Ship 25 will still be a huge leap for Starship program. 
NASA Administrator Bill Nelson loves to boast about the space agency's beast of a moon rocket. The Space Launch System is a towering 322 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty and, as Nelson likes to point out, the most powerful rocket in the world, for now at least. Powered by a staggering 33 first-stage engines, Starship would have nearly twice the thrust of the SLS. And unlike NASA's SLS, which falls into the ocean after its payload is launched, the stainless steel Starship is designed to return to a soft landing on Earth, to be used again. If the SLS represents a traditional government approach to rocket design, one that uses hardware originally designed in the 1970s for the space shuttle, Starship symbolizes spaceflight's modern entrepreneurial bent. Starship is designed to be refueled in orbit, allowing SpaceX to hoist an unprecedented amount of cargo and potentially dozens of people to deep space. And because it will be reusable, it is expected to be far less expensive to operate than the SLS. The promise of Starship and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's assertion that the vehicle could make life on Mars real have attracted legions of fans. For years, they have jammed Musk's presentations on the rocket, obsessively tracked its design iterations and made pilgrimages to SpaceX's Starship facility in a remote corner of South Texas the company calls Starbase. But Starship also has won over NASA, which has placed the rocket at the center of its exploration goals. In 2021, the space agency awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract to use it as the vehicle that would land astronauts on the surface of the moon, giving it a starring role in NASA's campaign to return people to the lunar surface as part of its Artemis program. Its launch will be the second time SpaceX has attempted to fly the full vehicle, the Starship spacecraft mounted on top of the Super Heavy booster. A successful launch would be no small feat, especially given the size and complexity of the rocket. At the end of this way, Starship would serve not only as a vehicle for exploration, but for science as a whole. With its ability to hoist enormous amounts of mass to orbit, astronomers and astrophysicists are rethinking what sorts of telescopes and instruments can be catapulted into space. In its fully reusable configuration, Starship would be able to lift more than 100 metric tons more than 220,000 pounds, to the moon and even more to low Earth orbit, according to a SpaceX user's guide from 2020. By contrast, the current version of SLS is capable of hoisting 27 metric tons to the moon, according to NASA. With a pending upgrade, that would increase to 38 metric tons. Assuming it is successful, Starship will dramatically enhance our space capabilities in ways that will qualitatively alter how astrophysics missions can be built, predicted an article in Physics Today written by a trio of astronomers and physicists. Astrophysics missions to space have always been tightly constrained by the capabilities of the launchers, which have not changed substantially in two decades. A report last year by the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine found that starships can accommodate payloads that are significantly larger and heavier than traditional NASA planetary payloads, significantly reducing the need for the costly reductions in size and mass required for traditional NASA payloads. It's quite simple, really. When you design any missions for astronomy, you're very limited by the mass available in the rocket. Martin Elvis, a senior astrophysicist at the Harvard and Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, said in an interview. The James Webb Space Telescope, for example, had to be designed to be folded so it could be stuffed into the nose cone of the Ariane 5 rocket that shot it to space. The total mass was nearly 14,000 pounds, far less than what Starship would be able to accommodate. Your whole development process, your whole design process becomes so much simpler, he said, and that saves enormous amounts of cost. Indeed, Starship's cargo space is so generous that it may take a while for the space industry to grow into it. Anyways, SpaceX needs to launch successfully first. Wish all the best for them on 1117. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.